Uh, we do have an elephant by the name Naleku here, who happens to be the youngest that we've got in the nursery, who was rescued from the Masai Mara. She's only 10 months old at the moment. The mother died from a natural disease out in the wild, and that's why she was left alone. She was about six months when she came in. She's been in the nursery for about uh, three months and so far adjusting well. And next to her, we've got an elephant by the name Mukoka, who is approximately two years old. And Mukoka was rescued from northern part of Sabo East National Park, a place called Edumba. Identified by our aerial surveillance on patrol who found the baby all alone within the park, observed him for some time, hoping for the mother to come back and collect the baby, but none existed. And that is why we rescued him at seven months. Right now he is two years old. We also have Tamiyoi here, and Tamiyoi is about three and a half years, second oldest that we've got in the nursery, one of the mini matriarchs assisting Tagwa to take care of the rest of the group. And Tamiyoi was rescued from Samburu. She was found fallen down a well when she was only one month, and that is why we rescued her. Right now she's approximately three and a half years old, and any time from now ready to go back into the wild and start the process of being reintroduced. Second is the youngest bull next to me, an elephant by the name Rojo, who is about 14 months, who was rescued from Sava West National Park, and the mother is believed to have been killed by poachers, and that's why Rojo was left as an orphan. I do have Kyombo here, and Kyombo is about two and a half years. Kyombo was rescued from the Masai Mara. He was identified all alone within the park at a young age of below a year old. Nobody knows exactly the whereabouts of the mother and the rest of the family members and that is why we rescued him. Right now he's about two and a half years old. We've got another group joining us now, and uh, the one in front is called Maktau, and Maktau is about uh, two and a half years old. Maktau was uh, rescued from a Sava conservation area near a place called Maktau. He was found in a community all alone when he was about three months. Uh, we don't know what happened to the mother, but being found in a community suspects that he might have been separated from the family by human beings and so is a victim of human wildlife conflict. The biggest in size is Tagwa, and Tagwa is about uh, four years old. She's the oldest that we've got in the nursery, the main matriarch, the leader of the group. She was rescued from Mount Kenya Forest, and this was after she had been separated from her family by human beings. She was about eight months old by then. I do have Laro next to Tagwa, and Laro is about two years old. Laro was rescued from the Masai Mara or Laro Conservancy, believed to have been separated from her family by human beings. That's why she was left as an orphan. Then behind me here, I've got Kiasa, who is almost three years, and Kiasa was rescued from Sava Conservation Area. She's a drought victim. Her mother is believed to have died from starvation due to drought, and that's why Kiasa was left alone. Right now, she's approximately almost three years old and adjusting well in the nursery. We do have Enkesha right here. And Enkesha is approximately three years old. And Kesha was uh, rescued from the Masai Mara. She was found trapped in a snare all around her trunk. And that's why we rescued her. You might have realized that she's got an opening on the trunk which was caused by this snare. And when she came in the nursery, we called in the vets to come and stitch the trunk back to normal. A surgery that was successfully done. But after a few days before the wound was healed, the elephant managed to take off all the stitches from the trunk. 
that's where you might see part of it is still open but it's sealing well she's also in a position to use the trunk perfectly since the trunk is full of muscles she manages to squeeze the muscles together uh, cover the opening suck the water into the trunk and blow it into the mouth which means you'll be able to survive out into the world i also have musiara close to me who is uh, slightly over three years same age as satau uh, one of the older bulls and musiara was rescued uh, from the Ma mara identified all alone while at the age of about one month old which is not normal and also not safe and this is not safe because an elephant at one month does not have any teeth to browse on greens. They entirely rely on the mother's milk. He did not have the mother to provide the milk no protection. So he was just very lucky to be found still alive at one month. And that's why we rescued him. Right now slightly over three years and any time from now ready to go back into the world. And start the process of being reintroduced. So right now we've got a total of uh, 18 elephants with us and this is a group that we've got in the nursery at the moment. They will stay with us until the age of three years and any time after the age of three we will start to reintroduce them back into the world slowly by slowly. That is when we take them to Savo East National Park and Kibwezi Forest. We've got three reintroduction centers, Umani Springs, which is found within Kibwezi Forest, Idumba Stockades, which is found within the northern part of Sabo East National Park, and the Voice Stockades. So the elephants will go in any of these three reintroduction centers where we've got our keepers that will monitor them as they interact with different world hearts until the time they will decide that they're ready to join the world families and they go by themselves. They will decide when to go, which world had to join, whom to accompany with. Uh, our keepers will just observe and see the reaction. And later on, we said the elephants become as wild as any other elephant out there. So while in the nursery, the elephants are under a 24-hour care. Uh, we take care of them all day and all night. They always have the keepers. For example, for the full day, the elephants are out with in, in Nairobi National Park. All the bushes you can see around is part of Nairobi National Park. So the elephants go out every day in the morning at 6, always accompanied by the keepers to provide protection whenever needed. So they come back for bed at 5 in the stockade, so the bedrooms where every elephant has got one room. And those elephants that are below the age of 2 years also have a keeper spending the night in the rooms. This is for the purposes of feeding them on demand and on every 3 hours. For the purposes of covering them with blankets to make sure that they are kept warm. And also for the purposes of keeping them company. And lastly, the keepers spend the night in the rooms because elephants are social animals. They always stay in groups and families while out in the world. And we found them all alone, which means they've lost their families. When they come in the nursery, they become part of our families. And so we have to be with them all day and all night. If you leave them alone, they become lonely and stressed. They can easily be stressed to death for being left alone. And that's why a keeper has to be in the rooms at night for those that are still young. Kyombo, stop being bully. Be a good boy. Now when the elephants come at this place for this uh, mud bath, 
uh, we have a water hole for them to play this is if they want uh, we've got some piles of soil for them to roll in and, and play with the dust uh, we let them do it when they want but we assist them at some point and we've got some greens for them to feed on so these elephants are not trained on anything they are living in a wild environment and doing what they want to do as any other wild elephant out there and that is why one of them at the far end is trying to get water from the water hole maybe after doing that uh, he might want to get into the mud and roll in the mud and that is Ndololo who is taking the water from the water hole and after that he might want to join in or not it is not warm enough for them to roll in the mud but sometimes some of them want to do it even when it is too cold on the other side we've got a group of them trying to roll in the dust and um, playing the mounting game and piling all together and as always Tagwa being the matriarch she's always the first one to lie down uh, to actually entice the others to do the same thing and play and she allows the other young ones to mount on her and learn to play so that is what is happening here at the moment as some of them on the ground just relaxing and dusting So if you're joining us now, we are at the Sheldrick's Wildlife Trust, Nairobi Nursery, where we take care of orphan baby elephants and orphan baby rhinos, and later on reintroducing them back into the wild. And so the Sheldrick's Wildlife Trust is working together with the Kenya Wildlife Service to ensure that all animals are safe in the parks. The sick ones are being treated and set free. The orphans are being rescued. The snares are being put off and the parks are safe for all wild animals. And that is why, in addition to taking care of the baby elephants and rhinos, we also have other projects like mobile veterinary units, anti-poaching teams, community projects, aerial surveillance. We've got the dock unit. And all this is for the protection and care of all wild animals out within our country working together with the Kenya Wildlife Service. So if you're joining us now, we are at the Sheldrick's Wildlife Trust Nairobi Nursery. And uh, you might be interested in supporting what the Sheldrick's Wildlife Trust are doing. Uh, you can do that by going on our website and uh, picking out on how you can donate to fund any of our projects. Uh, you can buy milk for the elephants. You can support or donate to any of our projects. You can adopt an elephant as well. 
and if you go on our website it's very easy to find how to adopt an elephant you can adopt an elephant for yourself or you can do it as a gift to somebody and if you do it as a gift the gift recipient receives the updates every month if you do it for yourself you receive the updates every month for one year so you can help support what the show tricks are doing by going on our website finding out how to donate how to adopt and you will have ensured that these animals have a better life before they finally become wild The O1 to roll in the dust and uh, Tagwa is right in the middle. So the others are trying to get some space to join. Including um, Naboishu, the latest arrival who is joining in very well. The elephant still having an I interesting time here at the mud bath. Moving up and down and trying to find where they like to play most best. Well, if you're joining us now, we are at the Sheldrick's Wildlife Trust, Nairobi Nursery. And as I've mentioned, we feed these elephants on intervals of three hours day and night. Uh, one elephant needs a keeper every day and in the night as well for those that are below two years. And as mentioned that we feed them on milk on every three hours. Some of you might be wondering, do you milk a wild elephant to get the real elephant milk? No, we don't feed them on an elephant milk because it is really not easy to milk a wild elephant and get the real milk. But we feed them on a human baby formula whose fats have been emulsified to make it easier for these babies to digest. And uh, this formula was pioneered by the late uh, Dr. Dem Daphne Sheldrick after 28 years of struggle and research. Uh, she, used, she did a lot of trial and error and lost most of the first orphans. Once she pioneered this formula, most orphans have survived and gone back into the world. And that's why it is believed to be close, the real mother's milk. So we feed them on every three hours day and night. And one of the elephants among the big group takes a total of 24 liters of milk in a day. The tiny two babies that you've seen, these are Naleku and Roho, take about 14 liters of milk in a day. This milk comes in powder form. We mix it with warm water at, uh, at the right lukewarm temperature. Uh, this is what they get from the mother and that's why we, have, we must make it at the correct temperature. And if you've been with us from the beginning, you might have realized that Roho, one of the little babies, is always very close to Tagwa, the oldest and the main matriarch. Roho is always walking behind Tagwa, trying to... This is what happens in the world. 
female elephants have got very strong maternal instinct. They're very protective of the young ones. And they'll always want to protect the young ones in the family as well. And that is why Tagwa being the main matriarch has the responsibility of ensuring that everybody is okay but giving priority to the little ones. We do have the likes of Maisha, uh, Nabulu, Tamioi and Enkesha. We also have the upcoming matriarch Kiasa who is also interested in taking care of Roho and Naleku as well. So that happens naturally. We don't train them. We don't tell them who should be the leader. They know that by themselves and it just comes up uh, out naturally. The two little ones trying to push around, trying to size up, no is stronger than the other. This always happens with our kids at home as well. So if you're joining us now, we've been at the Sheldrick's Wildlife Trust, Nairobi Nursery, doing the 11 a.m. milk feed. The elephants have already had the milk. The brow they're getting some greens. They've rolled in the dust. Uh, they have not gone into the water hole because it's not warm enough. And we thought it is wise to bring you this to your sitting room because of what is happening worldwide. People have been enclosed in the rooms and it is a good idea to bring some good news uh, next to you and that's why we are bringing you these live views here uh, these two are tagua and uh, tamio on my left trying to play around so that is why we are bringing you these live views at the moment so that you can get to see what is happening here in kenya at the sheldrick's wildlife trust nairobi nursery And the elephants will be leaving us, going back into the park to continue with the rest of the day. As I said, we set them free in a wild environment so that they can learn by natural instinct on how to behave as elephants. So they'll go back into Nairobi National Park and continue to browse and play and do what they want to do as elephants as the keepers will always observe and provide help wherever needed. So thank you very much everybody for those of you that have been with us uh, during this live feed and viewing at the Sheldrick's Wildlife Trust. Uh, we trust that you've enjoyed being with us and we'll be able to bring you more uh, next time. Thank you and keep safe.